Hey everyone, and this is Luke. I just wanted to give you a little update before the episode kicks in. In this week's episode, Mark and I discussed our two favorite MLS teams, his The Earthquakes, mine The Chicago Fire, and how they did in the draft and their their off-seasons. Now, we recorded this episode on Sunday, so it was the day before news broke for the fire that they were being sued, or at least members of the organization were being sued by members of Sector Latino for the incident that happened in Houston. I wanted to put this note in there to mention that we are not ignoring that when discussing the fire off season. We simply at the time of recording did not know about it. And if we had, we would have commented on it because it is a a sad situation all around and it is more heaping on the pile of things that just continue to go wrong for an organization that I really love and I'm attached to. So we hope you'll enjoy the other things that go down in this episode, but we just wanted you to be aware of why a major topic was skipped. Thank you and thanks for listening. Kid, seriously. So MLS just concluded a big weekend. On Friday, we had the first two rounds of the MLS draft. And we, being those privileged fans who our teams always finish where they get really great draft picks, generally get exciting draft days because we're bad during the regular season. You, of course, are a San Jose Earthquakes fan. I am a Chicago Fire fan. We finished last place and fourth to last place which is pretty spectacular achievement for both teams. But because of expansion teams, we all got bumped down a spot. The Quakes had the second overall pick. The Fire started with the fifth overall pick in the draft. So my question for you, Mark, as a diehard Quakes fan, former season ticket holder until you had to get the hell out of Dodge, how are you feeling about your Quakes after after a day of drafting and an and offseason, basically, where you've seen a lot of changes? You know, um, we're... Uh, we Quakes fans right now are, I would like to say, cautiously optimistic after the utter disaster of last season. Um, I, I mean, signing a tire fire at left back, honestly, would have been an improvement. Bringing Almeida from uh, Chivas uh, was a huge upgrade, um, not only, I think, in coaching in general, but also in creating a pipeline to more Central and South America players, um, which I think Atlanta United has showed the league is really the future for success right now. That it's not in getting aging big name stars from Europe. It's not in mining the the Balklands area like our our previous coach was trying to do. It's really going for Central America. And so having somebody who's, you know, he's Argentinian, um, coach in Mexico um, has is bringing players with him. I think that that's really the the way to go. And so we're we're we I, I don't want to say we're excited only because we've been burned so many times. Um, we were burned by Dominic Kinnear. We were burned by by Starre Doyle after 2012. Just made an art and a science out of burning us with every single signing that he had. We're, you know, we're, we're a little too beaten down to, to truly be excited, but we got a decent draft pick and we were number two after Cincinnati and it's, uh, Saeed Haj, who, you know, I think he's young. I believe his generation Adidas too. So that works, you know, as far as salary cap, um, that's somebody who can develop. I'm not going to lie and say I've watched a ton of game film because I haven't. And I, I couldn't tell you anything about any of the other draft picks, really, um, which almost never, I mean. You don't watch you college know, soccer just, constantly? No, I don't watch college soccer constantly. But, and I mean, hell, you almost never sign half of the draft picks anyway. So it, it, it's irrelevant. Um, and also, too, I know that um, Almeida is looking to build through the draft. So I don't really put a lot of import in anybody else. But, um, you know, we're we're looking at uh, I think I I think honestly they could be a playoff team especially given that the playoffs have been increased by one team now so I I feel like we're a team that could probably slide in maybe in like the sixth or seventh slot. What do you view as a successful season? I mean, you finished last. You know, you won the wooden spoon last year. You know, obviously you you have 
hope that they could make the playoffs based on what they're doing. But where do they have to finish for you to say, okay, that was this, that season was a success and I'm happy with what we did? Um, they need to have at least one playoff win. Okay. And they need to not only make the playoffs, they need to win a game and get to the second round. Um, I think if they can do that, then a, a, making the playoffs will be a meeting expectations. Winning a game in the playoffs will be exceeding them for us, uh, I think, at this time. Um, also, two, and he's only two goals away, so it's probably not a great big concern, but the, the entire San Jose fan base has a huge amount emotionally invested in Wando breaking Donovan's all-time scoring record. Yeah, um, you have that, to assume that's going to be coming. Like, yeah. there's no way he drops off. I know he'll probably be more in a sub role, but even as a sub, yeah. he'll be able to but, pick that off. Yeah, he, he's got us. He'll squeeze out at least five or six goals this season, um, even as a sub. So, but if by some fluke of either the way Almeida plays, trading him, him getting injured, whatnot, if that doesn't happen, that would be as devastating to the Quakes fan base, I think, as any result that could occur. So no, so, no broken legs in his first sub appearance and out for the year, right? And and you know, fortunately, he he stays pretty healthy, so it's not a not a huge concern. But he's also starting to get up there in years, um, even though he's like eight years younger than me. <laughs> but whatever. I, 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 I had a pretty good deadlift the other day, so I'm feeling good about me at my age. What yes. about the fire? How, how are you feeling about them and their not wooden spoon winning season um, prospects? So the the fire had an interesting draft. I think for, from a fire fan perspective, it, it feels much different than it probably feels if you're just an outside analyst who looked at it. So, you know, we're in the, the th- we basically have, after being the model franchise, for the first 10 years of our existence since basically 2010, we've been bad. And in the last five, six years, really, really bad. And we're in the fourth year of a three year plan where last year we finished fourth from last. And the two years ago, we were the, we won the wooden spoon and we're, you know, tied for our worst or a point away from our worst point total ever. I mean, so we've, we've been very, very bad and, there isn't a lot of faith in our GM. They're battling with the supporters group, so we don't even have fans. The whole thing is kind of a mess. So we we go into this draft. We have the fifth overall pick. We only have 17 players on the actual roster at the or 18 players on the actual roster, and most of them, you know, we have Bastian Schweinsteiger and Nemanja Nikolic and Alexander Katai, and then we have a bunch of you know third round draft picks and kind of cast off guys that we've been able to pull in. So when you we consider Dax McCartney a draft or a, a or, cast and, and Dax Dax McCarty too, um, okay. But you know we ha- but but all those guys we listed that are like the good players are all over thirty, right? And then you know I I think Jordy Mahalovich is the one guy who's kind of our young guy we can build around. And then we have a bunch of veteran old veteran guys who are close to done. And then we have a bunch of cast off type guys who. You know, who who knows what they're going to be able to do, but there isn't a ton of optimism. So when we immediately trade out of the fifth spot and drop into the 15th spot with Colorado, there's kind of some groans like, OK, you know, we're, we we tend to trade a lot on draft day. This GM has made a minimum of three trades at every single draft he has ever had. Uh, and generally we've traded away Jack Harrison, you know, some good players in order to do that. And. Then we trade out of the 15th spot for more money. So we get 115 or 150,000 in allocation money for basically the fifth spot. So you're kind of this groaning like, you know, we need players, we need players and we're not getting players. And then we move into our second round pick, which we traded for a player to be named later, which is different than other sports because a player to be named later is is different in MLS because we knew who that player was. The fire knew who that player was. They agreed on a specific player. We know now it's Amato Moreno. But the reason it sounds bad is because MLS is polite to their players and says we don't announce the names until the player can be notified, unlike the NFL where you're just traded or you know, you're know you on the New York Mets and you're playing second base and start crying because you learned you've been traded on the field. Um, which is kind of nice, but for the fans, we just went, we just gave away a second round pick and we walked away from this draft with no players. We still have 
17, 18 players on the roster, and that's it. Now, this Moreno guy looks like a good depth prospect and better than anything we could have got in the draft. This is supposed to be a weak draft. This is a guy who scored 11 goals for Red Bull 2 in the USL last year. So that sounds like a good deal, and that amount of allocation money is good, I guess. And we need players that can make impacts right now. Um, the other news we got is that we have are about to sign a 23-year-old uh, Polish national team winger. So... When I look at our starting, you know, upfront players, on paper, it sounds like it could be okay. We have Nikolic, who won the gold boot two years ago. Katai was great last year. We have this young Polish guy, Mihalovic, looks like he could be the real deal. And then we have McCarty and Schweinsteiger as our holding midfielders. So that, that looks really good on paper. We have one legitimate defender on our roster, who is this guy, Marcelo, that we signed and have never seen play, but at least on paper, he looks good. And we have no goaltenders of any quality and to have faith in our, our GM to say that he is going to bring people in, like he's lost the benefit of the doubt. So maybe he will, and maybe we'll get better, but I have no faith that he can pull together a big enough roster to do anything. Um, my realistic thought is that this is a team that will probably finish very similar to where it finished this year. It's going to be in that, you know, not the, the worst team in the Eastern conference, but not in the playoffs. And you know, one of the worst teams in the league. I think for me to measure success, they need to, as you said, not just make the playoffs. They need to to win a playoff game. We haven't won a playoff game in 10 years. The last time we won a playoff game was in 2009 when we went to the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. There, There is no more excuses. There is no more plans. There is no more trust the processes. Like, you you have to win now. I we are already second to worst in attendance. We have a bad state, an old stadium with bad location and bad revenue. We don't have a big fan base. The only way to cure that is to win. There's no more marketing plans. There's no more any of that. And you know, I I I, I don't see a realistic way that anyone in our front office should keep their position if we don't get out of the first round of the playoffs. I have no faith that we'll even make the playoffs at this stage, but that has to be the minimum because we you you can't take a franchise that's this proud and been bad for this long and not not succeed after four years of getting to do whatever you want. And what really pisses me off between you and I cheer for two very old franchises, depending on how you view the earthquakes, um, but still older franchises. And our dumb friend Garth, who's a Minnesota United fan, is going to have a better team than both of us next year. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, is there any word on internal pressure on Nelson Rogers? I mean, Rodriguez. He, no, I there. Oh, Rodriguez, excuse me. There isn't, and I I don't think there will be unless we have an ownership change. And I, you know, the the owner has uh, had a very combative relationship with fans. He had a former public relations manager write a letter talking about how the fans are are garbage it's the famous editorial that even Alexi Lalas commented on on a national television about and i think he likes that rodriguez booted out fans that protest are losing um i think he likes that they've gotten some different sponsorships and stuff like that i i don't know if there's any pressure on well and not as much pressure as there should be um but i, I I really have to think, like, if we don't make the playoffs, if we're a joke again this year, I mean, how do you go into year five of this three-year plan and be like, okay, well, just trust the process. Like, it, it's yeah. insanity. Yeah. So good on you for having faith in your quakes. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, it is one of my defining features is that I am always unrealistically optimistic at the beginning of the season for any team. Um, I go into every year thinking, this is the year the Vikings are going to do it. This is the year that the Quakes are going to turn it around and they're going to make a real run in the playoffs. And um, no, the, the one thing too, though, is that if anybody out there hates Portland teams, um, this is actually a really good time for you because so I came into the Earthquakes my, in 2011, which my first year as a season ticket holder was 2012 when they did amazingly well, right? That was when I bought in. And then since then, they've just gone to hell after that i wasn't really into the vikings until randy moss showed up and then yes they had a great season they almost made the super bowl and then it's just been utter disappointment since then twins 
you know, I basically started in like 87 and then, you know, okay, they had two good years and then they crashed. So my point being is that we move up to Portland and in a a couple weeks of our being here in Portland, the Thorns played in the championship and lost. The Timbers played in the championship at loss. So that means I bought in like every other team right at the peak. And so they're all going downhill from here on out. So, so decades they, of failure are about to befall yeah, the Timbers. Exactly. I, I am bringing the curse of my fandom to Portland teams. So I apologize in advance to Timbers fans. Well, on that level of optimism, it is time for us to call it a quits for the week. You can find our not here friend Maya Madrid on Twitter at Maya Madrid. You can find me on Twitter at Luke underscore Neitzel, N E I T Z E L. Mark, where can they find you? They can find me at Wink Martindale 5. Now, this is not to be confused with Wink Martindale 6, who apparently is going around picking fights with fellow Donald Trump fans on Twitter and somehow getting me tagged in the responses. So, be not confused. Wink Martindale 5, not 6. All right. He's Wink Martindale 6. Together we are no, at Kids five. Serious. Five. Yes. As I said, he's at Wink Martindale 6. Together we are at Kids Seriously, and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at kidsseriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.